to my latest installment of my Erin Recommends. Um, in my last Erin Recommends video, um, I asked people for suggestions of maybe genres or categories that um, you would like to see. And one person very helpfully commented um, and said, Summer Reads. I've tried to record this video before and it deleted. So I've tried to um, get this up earlier. Um, but here I am, take two. Um, so here's sort of my recommendations for reading in the summer. Um, now for me in the summer, reading is all about fun, light, fluffy reads. Um, not all the time, but for the majority, you want something that's going to be fun to read, that um, you want to take to the beach with you, you want to take on a picnic with you, you want to sit out in the garden and read. You don't want to carry around a hefty tome with you. Um, that, this again, my opinion. Um, so these are the books that I would recommend for reading in the summer, that I would personally enjoy reading in the summer. Um, first off, romance. I... I read a lot of romance. You, probably, If anyone that follows my channel that sees my wrap-ups, um, the majority of my wrap-ups, there's some sort of romance book involved in my wrap-ups. Um, and I'm a big fan of historical slash Regency romance. And the most recent one that I have read um, and really enjoyed that I would recommend and would think that it's a really good book for summer. It's a really quick read, really fast-paced, funny, enjoyable. And that's The Prince Who Loved Me by Karen Hawkins. It's sort of a Regency romance novel that is kind of a retelling of Cinderella. Um, so already amazing. And it's just really fun and lighthearted. Doesn't take itself too seriously. Really, really enjoyed this one. And if you enjoy Regency romance, I think you would too. Now, if you don't like Regency romance, but you do like contemporary romance, a great one for the summer would be Hero by Samantha Young. Um, and this is a standalone novel. She also has written the On Dublin Street, which I have on my Kindle. I don't have physical copies of. They would also be great summer reads. Um, again, fast paced, hot, really hot. Um, so this one is about a woman called Alexa. Um, and she works as an assistant phot photographer. And one day they're basically at a job and she sees Kane, what's his name? Caraway? Kane Caraway? I think it's Caraway. And um, there's basically this attraction between them. And then as soon as he finds out her name, um, he basically, he essentially gets her fired um, because Alexa's father did something horrific um, to his family um, and she ends up losing her job. And then um, basically she goes to him and says, look, can you help me get my job back? And then he actually ends up hiring her and um, romance ensues. But it, I wouldn't say it's a typical Mills and Boone type romance. It has its ups and downs. There's some definite angst in here. There's some past troubles for both of them. Really, really good if you like your romance novels but you like your romance novels with a little bit of depth this definitely has that so recommend that um ya wise um i would definitely recommend katie mcgarry her ya novels they they have romance in them but they are so much more than romance um each of her books sort of tackles an issue um, they are not just, you know, two teenagers making out. They are far more than that. So I would definitely recommend Pushing the Limits. Um, I would recommend her whole um, Pushing the Limits series. They're, as you can see, they're up here. But I thought it was really pointless to show you all of them. Um, my actual favourite <coughs> would be a tie between Pushing the Limits and Crash Into You. Um, I find it really difficult to pick between them. Um, but Pushing the Limits is about a young girl called Echo and a young man called Noah and they both have their issues. Um, Echo 
has horrific scars up her arms. Um, she wears gloves at all times so that no one sees them. Um, she used to be really, really popular and now she's sort of shrunk into herself and she finds it really hard to interact with people. Noah, um, he's known as a bit of a man whore, but actually he, there's more to him than what people see. He is struggling to get custody of his younger brothers that he loves more than anything um, after their parents died. So there's definitely a lot more depth to this than you would assume. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. It's I can't even put into words how much I love it. Um, and I, what I love is that you get both Noah and Echo's point of view. You don't just get one of their points of view. You get both. And I always really, really appreciate that in a story. Um, if you've already read the Pushing the Limit series or you're not sure about starting it or whatever, there's always Nowhere But Here, which is also by Katie McGarry, but it's the first book in her Thunder Road um series um which came out a little bit earlier on this year brilliant summer read um it's again you get both characters points of view and you get emily and you get oz um emily has basically been raised by her mum and her stepdad um i can't remember where they actually come from but basically she comes from a good neighborhood goes to a good school has good friends um and then she finds out that her biological grandmother has died. Um, so she travels to meet them and she finds out about her real dad and about a motorcycle gang. And it's, she's basically just thrown in to the complete opposite of the world that she's been in. Um, and yet yeah, this is definitely not insta love. Neither of these stories are insta love. I'd just like to put that out there. Um, but really, really good YA contemporaries that have a meaning to them, have a depth to them that I'm not saying all YA contemporary novels are missing because they are not by any stretch of the imagination but I just have a particular love fondness for Katie McGarry. So definitely recommend those. Then I think another great one that's middle grade. Um, I've recommended this before but any chance to recommend this series I take it um and that's the land of stories by chris colfer this would be a really really great one for summer because it's basically just full of adventure full of fun um if you haven't checked this series out guys you really really need to um i know some people have put off books that are written by celebrities um don't be this is absolutely amazing um, it's about two twins, Alex and Connor, who find themselves transported to the fairy tale world with no way to get back. So they have to go and collect all these ingredients for a spell to take them home. Um, and what's great about this is now that the, the first four books in this series are now out. So if you found yourself loving this one, you can move straight on to the others straight away. You can just marathon them. They're brilliant summer reads to just sit out in the garden and read about all your favourite fairy tales in one world and chaos that's ensued when two twins fall into this world. Absolutely amazing. Uh, then I would recommend a classic to you for summer reading. Sometimes in the summer you don't want the struggle of reading the classic. You don't want to sit down and think too hard about what you're reading you just want to read and let it absorb. You don't want to struggle through some lines or some ambiguous prose. Um, not all the time, but sometimes you don't want that. And so what I think is a great compromise for the summer is Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery. This is a fantastic sort of children's classic. And if you haven't read it, I highly recommend doing so. Um, Anne of Green Gables is just fun. Um, this Anne Shirley, basically, she's not belonged to anybody before. She's an orphan. And when um, Matthew and Marilla Cuthbert, they're going to take in an orphan to help them on their farm. But when Matthew goes to pick up the farm boy, what he has instead is Anne. What good is Anne to them on a farm? But instead of sending her back, they end up keeping her. And Anne has such an incredible imagination. It gets her into all sorts of mischief. Um, but it's it's worth it it's funny it made me laugh it made me cry i think i read this two three years ago now um absolutely love it to pieces it's a fantastic classic that i think people should read and it's not hard to read either um it's easy to understand it's easy to get into it's really really fun 
perfect for reading in the summer absolutely perfect and the last book that I would recommend for you in the summer is if you like your sort of YA paranormal ish reads um I would recommend Of Poseidon by Anna Banks obviously on a hot day look at all that clear water to just dive straight into isn't that beautiful um basically Of Poseidon is about um Galen the prince of the Sirena I think how you say it um and a girl called Emma now Emma thinks she's just an ordinary girl and then one day there's an accident on the beach and she ends up in the water and Galen sees her and he can see that the fish sort of listen to her so actually Emma can communicate with fish um and the story just goes from there but it's it's perfect reading for the beach um so yeah, highly recommend this one for summer as well. So that's my recommendations for summer reading, guys. Do you agree with my choices? Have you read any of these? Do you agree that they're summer reads? Have I added any to your summer reading lists? Let me know in the comments down below. I always love to know. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you all soon. Happy reading.